the collaborators. Oh, yeah. That's the focus of tonight's angle. Oh, boy. Here we go. The, co the collaborators. Somebody is collaborating with China. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking the reason Laura Ingram is doing this is because Republicans, and especially Donald Trump, have been doing this very thing, this very thing, and uh, people are catching on. And so therefore, where there's smoke, there's fire over here. Also, uh, suddenly, it seems okay on the, it's real, uh, is it loud? Okay, good. Um, it also seems that um, they're now turning on corporate America in a way they never did before because uh, American companies bad. But let's let's see where this goes. Now, the biggest long term threat to America, it's not Russia or no. Iran or North Korea, although all of them present unique challenges. It's lip plumper misused, giving one uh, a mild look of Bell's palsy. No, that's not it. That's not the other thing. It's um. let's see. It's tennis elbow making it very difficult for you to salute, no, out over time, what's that, shoulder rotator cuff issues that make it difficult for you to raise your hand above, I'm not even going to pose in that, let somebody grab it. Um, and it's certainly not what the Democrats on the Hill and the Biden administration are focused on. Do you agree with your predecessors that white supremacist extremists remain the most persistent lethal threat in the homeland? Persistent lethal threat in the homeland. Now, I know what you're thinking. We just both heard that. What do you think the odds are that that are our, 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 that she did not see what the senator was saying? I, I do believe they they do at this time. The top. Well, yep. Yeah, the most lethal present threat in the homeland. Just saying, if you're going to, in the homeland, current organized lethal threat that they deal with, I mean, we could we go ghost guns, something like that? But in terms of an organization, and of course, domestic threat, we've dealt with this. The violent extremist threat we face comes from... Oh, oh, he even said it. They, they do at this time. The top domestic violent extremist threat we face comes from... Racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocate for the superiority of the white race. Yeah. So the the specific the domestic terrorism threat by Americans for Americans made by Americans of all of them, uh, white supremacists are are they're number one. They're number one. Um. Don't worry, black supremacists are number three on the list. It's okay. It's a it's a long list, but I don't think that's concerning to Laura Ingram. The biggest threat facing our democracy and our way of life is the Chinese Communist Party. Well, that would be on a geopolitical stage. And only if uh, you don't immediately go from this to um, an ad for Walmart. Now, under Biden, we find ourselves trying to play catch up with or blocking the CCP in their efforts to expand their power base across the globe. We do? Biden's only been in for 10 months. Why would we be playing catch up with the expansion if it hadn't sort of been expanding during the last four years? Because I doubt that, you know, the, the Chinese have had a 30 year plan for near on 15 years now. Um, I'm curious how the fact that the Biden administration is playing quote unquote catch up, um, to catch up with them, uh, before they actually made this progress, if they hadn't been making this progress during, all right. According to the wall street journal, classified American intelligence reports suggest China intends to establish its first permanent military presence on the Atlantic ocean in the tiny Central African country. Well, <clears throat> um, they're, they're trying. They've been trying for a long time. You know, they were building a military base in the UAE at the Port of Khalifa. They didn't start this year, but they were caught this year. Who caught them? Who was president last year 
And now who is president this year? Of Equatorial Guinea, a threat that is setting off alarm bells at the White House. Sikh's first military base, a threat that's setting off alarm bells at the White House. You mean they give a shit? Pentagon. Well, the alarm bells should have gone off, I don't know, 20 years ago. Oh, you mean when when Bush was president? Yeah, I, 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 we can go back and, and try Earth 2 where Gore actually won the election and so therefore he was in office uh, and see if it turns out differently. But you do realize uh, for the first eight years of the time that you're talking about where they started their plan that, that uh, what was that guy? He was a son of somebody. He was a son of a something that ran the country. Since trade opened between Red China and the West, the communist regime has grown richer and more powerful year after year. Active military manpower. Um, they allegedly have a billion people. Most of those people, most of those guns are facing inward. <laughs> For the record. Um, also, um, let's see, hold on one a second. I've, I've, I have to use secondary means to bring up um, some of my... Uh, Feed. It now has the largest number of active military personnel in the world with a 2.1 million troop size compared to our 1.4 million. Yeah, they have allegedly a billion people. By the way, uh, their, their, their ships suck and it, we'll get started on that later. I mean, that's a, it's a great conversation. By 2024, it's poised to have the biggest economy in the world. No. <laughs> well, sorry. When's that from? Sorry, dum dum. When was this? I have to. Let's see. Maybe I'll go in here. I'm gonna have to. I, this seems to be. There's something about this that. Oh, I'm sorry. What's that? Sorry. What? When was this projection? That's weird that you would, that's, if this, am I seeing that right? September 7th, 2014. Um, now I know what you're thinking, Hal, they've clearly got to be still on track. I mean, nothing is economically wrong with China right now. Their, their, their entire real estate sector isn't collapsing like Japan in 89, 90. <laughs> um, but uh, she, 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 there's probably more to this. Probably more to it. But. Which has our elites, frankly, just licking their chops. Our oh, sorry, our elites. First of all, don't say our elites licking their chops, um, and then lick your chops. Secondly, um, there no one like Wall Street. China just bugged out of Wall Street largely. And Wall Street, but for BlackRock and a couple other people, are distancing themselves from China entirely. I don't know what the fuck she's hanging on to here. CCP basically owns big business in America. Oh, th oh, they do. I didn't realize that, guys. The uh, the CCP basically owns big business in America. I can't wait to see how. And by the way, then if that's true, and this has been going on for twenty years, why the fuck didn't you guys have problems with quote unquote big business until? The, the weakest, whitest, oldest president since Jimmy Carter took over, right? How are, wh did you just not then give a fuck for 15 years or whatever? Today, shocking new documents obtained by the information detail a secret $275 billion deal dun, struck dun, five dun. years ago between China and the Apple CEO, Tim Cook. By himself? Well, now we know why Cook became such a CCP apologist and how Apple recently became the top-selling smartphone in China. Uh, except for the copies of them. Um, you can you know, Most of the phones over there that are listed as iPhones or use iOS are from a company called Apple. It sounds a lot like Apple, doesn't it? Also, if that's the case, then this $275 billion deal, why, are, why is Apple moving chip manufacturing over here? This is a Foxconn issue, by the way. They're still, for the record, they're still pissed that Foxconn didn't build a factory over here during Trump. That's what this is about. The company owes much of that success to CEO Tim Cook, 
who laid the foundation years ago by secretly signing an agreement with Chinese officials promising Apple would do its part to develop China's economy and technological prowess through investments, business deals, and worker training. Oh, yeah. You mean right about the time everybody was complaining about suicides at Foxconn facilities and that Apple was participating in what a lot of people viewed as slave labor. So they decided to do this big PR push worldwide about how they were going to invest in the people around China and the, the factories there because that was their full on investment. And now they're leaving China and now it, and the Chinese are leaking this basically to push back. Anything else? Well, well, that's not all the CCP got from Cook who has a huge influence operation in Washington. Apple lobbied to water down key provisions of an anti-Chinese slave labor bill, which would hold U.S. companies accountable for using Uyghur... Water down key provisions of an anti-Chinese slave labor bill. Were the key provisions part of the Uyghur bill? Or did Ted Cruz throw stuff in to try and water it down so that they they would they pull the bull, in, bull uh, the bill entirely? This is curious, though. All right, so here we go. Let's take a look. Now, we um, we definitely um, want to be on Apple about, you know, uh, the quality of their factories and the treatment of their workers. That said, um, Washington Post, um, wanting those things and knowing about those things and caring about those things is not the same as taking Laura Ingram's word for what a, uh, let's see, um, what an article says. Apple is lobbying. Hold on. Also, uh, it should not be lost on you that when it suits her, Laura Ingram is citing the Washington Post as a valued and trusted news source. Um, okay, that's, it should get the, the article there. Man, this is slow back here. Don't know why there's no stars up in the sky. Storm he with her. All right, this is going to be too slow. I'm going to have to find it on something else. Hold on. So we go back to my scene. Pop back to me. Hi, everybody. There you are. And then we go over to here. We go to um, Washington. Whoops. I can type Washington Post. Uh, Apple is lobbying mm -hmm. um washington post apple lobbies against here it is this is the article one second get out of here i don't need an ad for johnson and johnson move there we go um this is the article she's citing now again whoop here we go. Apple is lobbying against a bill aimed at stopping forced labor in China. Apple wants to water down key provisions of the bill, which would hold U.S. companies accountable for using Uyghur forced labor, according to two congressional staffers. Okay. Uh, Apple lobbyists are trying to weaken a bill aimed at preventing forced labor in China, according to two co congressional staffers familiar with the matter, highlighting the clash between its business imperatives and its official stance on human rights. Uh, human rights. U Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act would require U.S. companies to guarantee they do not use imprisoned or coerced workers from a predominantly uh, Muslim region of Xinjiang, where ac academic researchers estimate the uh, Chinese government has placed more than 1 million people in internment camps. Okay, the staffers, who spoke on condition of anonymity because the talks with the company took place in private meetings, said Apple was one of many U.S. companies that opposed the bill as it's written. They declined to, oh, they declined to disclose details on the specific provisions Apple was trying to knock down or change because they feared providing that knowledge would identify them to Apple. But they both characterized Apple's effort as an attempt to water down the bill. What Apple would like is we all just sit and talk and not have any real consequences, says Kathy Feingold, director of International Department of AFL-CIO. They're shocked because it's the first time um, where there could be some actual effective enforceability. Apple spokesman said it's dedicated to ensuring one of the supply chain, dignity and respect. We abhor forced labor. We share the committee's goal of eradicating forced labor and strengthening U.S. law, and we will continue to work with them to achieve that. He said the company earlier this year conducted a detailed investigation with our suppliers in China, found no evidence of forced labor on Apple production lines, and we are continuing to monitor this closely. Apple's lobbying firm, Fierce Government Relations, really, disclosed that it was lobbying on the bill on behalf of uh, Apple in a disclosure form, and that was reported by the information. However, the form did not say whether Apple was for or against the bill or whether it wanted to modify it in any way. 
Lobbying disclosure firms do not require that. Okay, Apple, uh, Apple says, uh, said publicly, Apple does not tolerate forced labor in its supply chain. Forced labor is abhorrent. We would not tolerate did, did Apple terminate a supplier relationship if it were found. The new bill would make it more difficult for U.S. companies to ignore abuses taking uh, place in China and give the U.S. authorities more power to enforce the law. One provision of the bill requires public companies to certify to the Securities and Exchange Commission that their products are not made using forced labor from Xinjiang. If companies are found to have used forced labor, they could be prosecuted for securities violations. Okay. While the U.S. law prevents companies from importing goods that were made using forced labor, the law is seldom enforced and it's difficult to prove U.S. companies know about the use of forced labor. Uh, passed 406 to 3 in the House in September. People involved in the legislation said the apparel industry is caught off guard by how quickly it passed without much lobbying. Now that the bill is sponsored by uh, uh, Rubio and McGovern is in front of the U.S. Senate, corporations have made more of a concerted effort to shape it in a blunt, uh, um, in part to blunt some of its sharper provisions, according to two congressional staffers. Some companies have lobbied to have their names removed from the bill. They say because it calls out specific brands like Patagonia, Coca-Cola, Coca and Costco for allegedly using forced labor from the region, it does not name Apple. Patagonia, Coca-Cola, and Costco did not respond to requests for comment. That's weird. They're name dropped in the bill and accused of this slave labor, or using slave labor from that but this article is not patagonia coca-cola and costco named in bill they tried to water down it goes after apple specifically um that i find curious the bill is primarily focused on textiles and other low-tech industries for instance xinjiang sugar has made its way to coca-cola and tomatoes have been used in heinz ketchup according to Hi human rights report um uh the, i don't know why they didn't mention cotton but that's a major one as well. Uh, that's why the apparel industry is upset. The apparel industry is not upset because their shirts are made of tomatoes or sugar. Um, most firms have stopped auditing in Xinjiang because the limitations placed by the Chinese government complying with the new bill would be costly to companies, especially in the textile industry, where cotton gets woven into garments around the world, making it difficult and expensive to trace. Yeah, they've been hiding it. They uh, they do it under the table. The SEC portion of the bill... Um, echoes a provision in the Dodd-Frank Act that requires companies to notify the government if their product contained conflict minerals from the Congo. That provision of the Dodd-Frank Act was created has created headaches for companies that import gold. Companies are concerned that the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act could create similar products, uh, problems, sorry, according to the lawmakers. Because China has transferred Uyghur Muslims out of Xinjiang to work in the other parts of the country, human rights act advocates say it may be difficult for any U.S. company operating in China to ensure it isn't benefiting even directly from the, even indirectly from forced labor. Okay, so that's what they're worried about. How many, how how far did we get down in this? Eight. Eight, it, you know, usually we'll get in there by three. That would be part of it. Okay, Xinjiang, which borders Pakistan and Afghanistan, was conquered by China in the 1700s. And the Turkic Muslims who live there have long fought against Chinese rule. Um, boy, it, 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 they act like this. Is, Washington Post acts like that's something that everybody talks about all the time. But in recent years, Chinese government has been cracking down on Muslims aided by advanced surveillance technology, such as... Yeah, and, and Snoopy neighbors. Uh, they're also trying to breed them out with Han Chinese. Um, that it, if, if we weren't talking about uh, ethnically Asian people that, that would get equated with Hitler like crazy. Um, with an estimated 1 million to 2 million people placed in camps, human rights groups have called the situation uh, cultural genocide. Um, agreed. And, and by the way, good old-fashioned physical genocide as well. Disputed the characterization of the program as camps, <laughs> saying they were vocational training centers that you can't leave and you sleep in. <clears throat> uh, they said they were going to end it in December 2019, which they didn't because all everybody graduated. Um... While it's unknown how much electronics manufacturing occurs in the region, some human rights groups believe there are plants that make electronic components in Xinjiang. And private companies, which act as brokers for Xinjiang laborers, have arranged for workers to be transferred from concentration camps to electric factories outside of Xinjiang, according to human rights reports. So that's the hard part. I don't know if they're trying to water that part down or make or clarify the language. Because if they bring people down from Xinjiang and use them as slave labor, but the people in like Shenzhen don't know the business is there, I mean, but in general, it's just time to get out, kids. 
Four alleged instances connected to Apple's supply. Okay, here we go. A March uh, report from the Australian Strategic Policy Institute identified four alleged instances in which labor from the Xinjiang region has been connected to Apple's supply chain. The report alleges that the workers were likely to have been forced or coerced, but it did not offer proof confirming the work terms and conditions. Apple products include thousands of components that are made by suppliers around the world. They also have a lot of clothing and other shit that they use. Um, you know, that they sell bags and covers and, you know, things that aren't part of the electronics. The company has a supplier code of conduct, says it uh, assessed 1,142 suppliers, that is a lot, in 49 countries in 2019, ensuring that good labor conditions are upheld. Apple uh, publishes an annual progress report, workplace rights or human rights, da da da. Okay, the Australian report alleges that in 2017, Chinese government transferred between 1,000 and 2,000 Uyghurs to, a, to work at a factory owned by O Film, which helps make the selfie cameras for Apple's iPhone. Apple's cook publicized his visit to an old film factory in December 2017, posing in a photo in front of a microscope on the factory floor, wearing a blue clean room, you know, a blue clean room jumpsuit, getting a closer look at the remarkable precision work that goes into manufacturing the selfie cameras for the iPhone 8, iPhone 10 at old film. Cook wrote on the Chinese social networking site Weibo. Old film also supplies other American companies like Dell, HP, Amazon, General Motors, according to the report, Amazon chief. Executive and founder Jeff Bezos owns the Washington Post. They have to tell you that. Dell, uh, da, 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 da. Um, Amazon denounced it, uh, forced labor on their website. General Motors and its sustainability report said it investigated the allegations, ended its relationship with the supplier. That's good. Good for you. Way to go, General Motors. A Chinese newspaper article from 2017 covered the transfer of Uyghur labor to the O-Film factory. The article put a positive spin on the story, referring to alleged forced laborers as urban and rural surplus laborers. That doesn't sound creepy at all. The Australian report, citing a local government document from September 2019, alleges that 560 Xinjiang laborers were transferred to the Henan province and that some of those workers ended up in Foxconn's Genzhou factory, otherwise known as iPhone City, where half of uh, Apple's flagship products are assembled. The report cites a 2018 speech by Chinese government officials announcing the transfer work. Okay, so um, the only way out of this is out of the Chinese factories for Apple in general because they can have all the standards they want and say, we care about forced labor and the like. But the Chinese government, which is part owner in Foxconn and every other company in the country, is eventually going to set them, you know, they're they're going to use people under the table anyways. Um, let's see. Boop. Where are we? Yeah. So this is, but like to water down key provisions. This is the idea that Apple is the only one trying to water it down. Other companies are as well. And nothing is mentioning the companies that were in there. Okay. Forced labor. Now, most American billionaires dismiss criticisms of China using words like how it's counterproductive and destabilizing to do so. And sometimes it's hard to tell the American elite from Chinese top propagandists. Um, it's hard to tell Fox hosts from top Chinese propagandists. I mean, only top Chinese propagandists would put up an article from 2014 that says China's going to overtake our, our, our economy in two years. Enter investor Ray Dalio. I look at the United States and I say, well, what's going on in the United States? And should I not invest in the United States because other things and not our own human rights issues? What they have is an autocratic system. Um, and um, one of the uh, leaders described it. He said uh, that uh, the United States is a country of individuals and individualism. In China, it's an extension of the family. As a top-down country, what they're doing is they behave like a strict parent. Hold on. W p play the whole fucking clip from this dude. You play him stammering in the beginning of this, and now we're going to saw sentences together? Yeah, just like the strict parent. What the fuck was that? How? How? Look at the cuts in this thing. Investor Ray Dalio. I look at the United States and I say, well, what's going on in the United States? And should I not invest in the United States because other things and not our own human rights issues? What they have is an autocratic system. Um, and um, one of the uh, leaders described it. He said uh, that uh, the United States is a country of individuals and individualism. In China, it's an extension of the family. As a top-down country, what they're doing is they behave like a strict parent. Like, uh, seriously, stitching, that's supposed to be one fucking sentence? Yeah, just like the strict parent.
That's what they say they are. Now, he tried later to walk it back, but you can't walk back those remarks. Well, especially after they've been sliced and diced like you did and made into something wholly different. Who gives it? What? And by the way, why is this dictatorial towards what the White House thinks? You, you don't think, does anyone think that I couldn't go down to, uh, to Wall Street with a microphone and find someone down there that will defend almost anything in another country and, and, and denigrate anything in this one or denigrate something in any other country or defend anything in this one for real. 666 yay we're at 666 in the suit in the chat if it's if you feel moved please uh super chat today i'm gonna try to i'm investing in making this area better this version of the show so that when i'm in la it's a little <clears throat> higher quality we know exactly what he said and why he said it bitch i don't know what the fuck he said <laughs> you cut it together play the whole thing his hedge fund just raised one and a quarter billion dollars for its China fund. Can't let a few hundred thousand people being tortured in camps get in the way of that win. Yeah, now go after the NBA and go after the Wall Street Journal. But it's one thing to buy off Wall Street. They aren't. Yeah, it is. I mean, it basically is. Big business in U.S. sold out to China years ago. That's the title of this one. This is what she said. Big business in the U.S. sold out to China years ago. Just in case you're... I got this. I'm going to get more room to move. There we go. My big old dome. Hold on. Hi. Hi, Laura. How are you? Boink, boink. I should just put myself up here since she probably considers me a collaborator. I'll just put myself there in the corner. What do you think? <laughs> By the way, anybody who watched... Um, my uh, morning show the other day where I was talking about the my trip to China, I think it's abundantly clear that uh, if I if I if she says anything about China and I say she's full of shit, I'm, I think you can feel safe to roll with my assessment makers after all. Their allegiance is to their investors and stockholders. Ugh. What's truly disturbing, Ugh is the spell the CCP has cast on our political class. Dun, 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 the spell. I think part of the spell was COVID. That's what did it. Just months ago. Oh, now I can't. I got to move myself out of the way because that's where all the little articles. Just months ago, what? Bush family nonprofits, uh, $5 million deal with China influence group. I'm beginning to think you have a, a bone to pick with the, with the early 2000s Republicans learned that a Chinese front group called the China United States Exchange Foundation handed $5 million to a foundation that was founded by George H.W. Bush's son, Neil Bush. Axios reported back in June that is the funding before, was meant to is, bolster the- Sorry, is this before or after he helped stage 9-11? I'm so confused. All right. China Foundation's efforts to promote a bilateral relationship that is functional, constructive, commercially robust, mutually beneficial, and politically sustainable. Yeah, they're dumping money to try and look nice. Yes. You know, it's it's kind of like, uh, oh, I don't know, when Trump shows up at a charity and pretends that he actually gives a shit. Now, this isn't surprising, given the Bush's overly optimistic and warm relationship with China. George W. Bush is the one, remember, who granted permanent normal trading relations with China back in 2001. See, I thought this was, uh, I thought Hillary did this using Obama as a sock puppet and they just ricocheted through Biden. And how's that worked out for us? Well, shit. I don't know what the fuck she was doing. I was waiting for a clip too, Laura. Trading relations with China back in 2001. And how's that worked out? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Were you expecting an answer? <laughs> they, they don't. What ha What happened there? Did she just have a brain fart or was she just waiting? She couldn't riff. 
I, it seems like the the same person who runs the teleprompter on Sean Hannity's show now runs it on hers. And how's that worked out for us? Well, <laughs> honest to God, trading what? relations with China back in 2001. <laughs> and how's that? <laughs> I don't know. I I feel like during that time we could have reset our entire uh, relationship with China. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> she, she's glitching. She's glitching. By the way, if uh, 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 what do, what do you want to bet that if Biden was reading a teleprompter and he had a a a break Britain like this, permanent normal trading relations with China back in two thousand one. And how's that worked out for us? Well, of course it hasn't worked out for us. Sorry, it's about as well as the war in oh. Afghanistan. Hold on. But back, to be fair, every back up. Pres- Wait, the, <laughs> I was trying to see how much time I could fit. Hold on. And how's... <laughs> Hold on, so I got to go back further. Permanent normal trading relations with China back in 2001. <laughs> and how's that worked out for us? Well, of course Sorry. it hasn't worked out for us. <laughs> uh, funny. Oh, quit it. Go back where I was. <laughs> About as well... <laughs> <laughs> the sound effects on this thing don't work quite as well. Sorry. <laughs> I, I I like how long how long is this shit? One. And how's that work? <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I, uh, I don't know. How long? How is that working out? Sorry. I, in 2001 and how's that worked out for us not not well sorry oh shit jumped out ahead of this hold on ccp has cast on our political class just months ago yeah we saw this handed five million dollars yeah we saw that hold on that is functional constructive now this isn't surprising w bush is Sorry. <laughs> I'm just, usually when I freeze on something like this, we have a, a you know, a, uh, and <laughs> we usually have like a, <laughs> Hallard. Oh, thanks, Amy. I'm trying. This is a whole different setup. That worked out for us. Well, of course it hasn't worked out for us about as well as the war. Now. I, I, honest to God, can't there be. Can't this happen on a day when I'm home with all my regular sound effects? This is terrible. Hold on. Let me see. Uh, yeah, see it in here. Don't let him give you any shit, lady. You're doing great. <laughs> you're doing so great. You're pretty. Oh, man. If, you're, if the other end of you looked anything like the front, I'd turn you back around. I'd hit you from the side. I mean that in a loving and supportive way, of course. <clears throat> it is for the record. But to be fair, every president except Trump misunderstood China's ambitions. Or- no, yeah, Trump understood their ambitions. That's why he sold all our corn, pork, and beans, and, and beef, and, and chewing tobacco, and, and, and corduroys to them, and then made that great trade deal, well, a third of a third of it. But you know what I mean? He did great. He chose to look past their brutal crackdown on human rights. Now, given this sordid history... He did? No one should be surprised that so few are willing to deny President Xi and his global propaganda victory in hosting the Winter Olympics. Yeah. Th- oh, well, I, I bet you anything that uh, you're going to see uh, what you call it. Uh, Biden's probably going to send all his diplomats over every last one of them. And he's going to make other countries do it, too. going to force them to do it like the New World Order. I got it. I have a new world odor right now. I think it's coming from my feet. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Get back. 
for the most part, elites in both parties just don't care. Yeah, just elites. Elites, she says, while uh, wearing one of Marie Antoinette's doilies as a dress. Is a diplomatic boycott enough, given the human rights abuses? Well, let me, let me first say, you, everybody can call it whatever they want to call it. I would just remind you that uh, often when you f use diplomatic boycott, that phrase, uh, that brings people back to 1980, uh, mm -hmm. and we are not. The athletes will be participating. We will be rooting for the athletes from home. I am an Olympics-obsessed person, so I'm looking forward to doing that. We felt that we could send a clear message uh, by, uh, by not sending a, an official U.S. delegation. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's definitely not like 1980, because in 1980, Russia's economy is nowhere proportionally to where China's economy is. Which yeah, but they had nukes pointed at us, fucko. Secondly, um, Fox is going to cover it. I mean, unless unless she's about to announce that Fox will not be covering the Olympics. Giant. It's ridiculous. Well, Xi, of course, is watching all these Biden bozos and he's just laughing. Is he? Is he just laughing? He's got to be just laughing. That's what he does all the time, right? That's, isn't that what we hear all the time? He's constantly laughing at us. That's it, right, guys? Hold on. Let me check. Um, let's see. She, mm -hmm. maybe I'll just look up she Olympics laughing. Um, one second. Oh, that's another one. Sorry. Mm -hmm. One moment, please. Just looking for something on here. Um, U.S. diplomatic. Yeah. All right, here you go. What do you, I mean, what, what says laughing more than, get out of here. Get these ads out of the way. There's so much of the page used up on this thing. Gee whiz. Okay, let me drag this down a little bit. That'll do it. Um, there you go. China threatens the U.S. with retaliation over diplomatic boycott of Winter Olympics. Yeah, that sounds like laughing. He, obviously, he's in on the joke, and it's not upsetting at all. China has threatened the Biden administration with retaliation over its decision to impose a diplomatic boycott on the 2022 Winter Olympics in Beijing, warning the move could harm bilateral relations. Um, let's see. Responding to White House announcement, China's foreign minister said it had launched solemn representation within the U.S. and vowed to take resolute countermeasures. Sounds like laughing. Out of ideological bias and based on lies and rumors, the U.S. is trying to disrupt the Beijing Winter Olympics. Uh, this will only expose its sinister intention and further erode its moral authority and credibility. I, I, I'm surprised he was able to say that without laughing. That's amazing. The wrong move of the U.S. has undermined the foundation atmosphere for the China-U.S. sports exchanges and co Olympic co uh, cooperation. It has shot itself in the foot. The U.S. should understand the grave, grave consequences of its move. Grave consequences. How dare you not send people to our... Oh, God. Oh, hold on. Laughing. American leaders too scared to go after China. All right. Okay. As if he cares if Kamala Harris or some assistant secretary of state shows up to watch what? The curling? Uh, that's a Canadian sport and we support our uh, brothers and sisters to the north. Um. What the CCP wants is a world where almost everyone is afraid to criticize President Xi. One of the ways you criticize the Chinese is not giving them face, which is not showing up. But, of course, Trump could like would fall over himself to give Xi a rusty trombone every time he wanted he to go there. murderous, genocidal policies. Which, by the way, is that new? Did that shit happen during... Did that start in the last 10 months? 
here on Fox News, you can still hear commentators who are willing to tell the truth about China. Mm. No, you you can hear commentators who are willing to kiss China's ass and boost them in areas they do not deserve it, like saying that their leader is laughing at us when he's clearly freaking out by saying their economy is going to overtake ours using old uh, uh, you know, articles on their economy from over a dec- about a decade ago when the reality on the ground has proven totally upside down from those original predictions. And including the idea throwing idea you know the the idea that Apple and all these folks support uh, the the Uyghurs um, and and yet at the same time use their slave labor as an indicator that the elites in America suck and have no moral high ground over Chinese people over the Chinese companies or the Chinese government in this term at the denigration of the Chinese people themselves. This is a Chinese propaganda piece, what you are watching right now. What Laura Ingram is doing is acting as a, a political voice box for the CCP. But how many Fortune 500 companies are going to let their officers tell the truth? How many universities flush with Chinese cash would allow their professors or administrators to really expose the CCP's ruthless past, present, and future plans? I don't know. Um, why didn't you ask that during the last four years when the guy you liked was ma- was busy selling them all of our pork, corn, and soybeans while Americans were in food lines? What about the NBA or other major American sports leagues? Mm-hmm. Where's Hollywood's epic takedown of Mao? Hollywood's epic takedown of Mao? Oh, we're sp- oh I see. Yeah, so... In case you can't figure it out, what she's upset about is that we keep picking on Hitler. Every time you turn around, it's time for Mel Brooks to knock the Nazis. And, uh, uh, why do you always got to knock the Nazis? I don't know. I think they're rude. I guess. I guess. You ever see, I don't know, a James Bond-like character go up against the CCP? Yeah. Well, I think we all know the answer, right? Yeah. Even our own Secretary of Defense is afraid to tell the truth about China. China presents a challenge. It's, it's our pacing challenge. But they're not 10 feet tall. Challenge. It's, it's our pacing challenge. But they're not 10 feet tall. Oh, my God. What a stupid comment. No, no, no. Yeah, they are 10 feet tall. Oh, my God. They're so big. Oh, my God. They have so many people. Oh, my God. All their boats are magnificent. Oh, my God. Have you not tasted their their military leaders uh pre-spooge i mean honestly it's amazing how can you even say that how can you not say that the greatest military on earth why are you not filleting the chinese right now every day the message spreads if you criticize china it can hurt your career he just said they're not 10 feet tall he just said we, we got to deal with them but they're not that scary he's he's actually speaking realistically you can criticize the Catholic Church, evangelical Christians, the United States, can tear down statues, melt them down, spread anti-American propaganda all you want, but do not criticize China. He did. You're not. You're the one saying that they're, you know, they're gigantic, insurmountable. They're going to beat our economy because they've got Apple in their pocket, right? It's done deal. 2024, right? As more Americans are silenced or just self-censor, we'll soon realize that the whole notion of free speech here becomes meaningless, just like President Xi wants. This is the real crisis of American democracy. The Constitution- What? What? The fuck are you talking about? (laughs) Guys. We're going to have to, if, if she wants us to, we're going to have to shred the Constitution. Free. I know you think you have free speech. I know you think you can talk shit all day long on the internet, but that's not true. Eventually, they, China is 10 feet tall, and, and Xi Jinping is coming for you. Prevents Americans from accepting titles of nobility from foreign governments. Uh-huh. Because the founders wanted Americans, including our elites, to be loyal to this country. But the CCP doesn't need to use titles. It has enough money to bribe almost anyone it wants. Uh, no. 
They're broke as fuck right now. If it had... It, it, this might have been true like a, a fucking decade ago. By the way, I think you guys need to put up more um, blocks on your screen at the end of your videos. It, it certainly makes me more apt to re really... I need to dive into this. It's quality. It looks great. It doesn't look at all like uh, three buildings in Hong Kong fell into each other. Um, hold on. Let me see if she... And that's the, the American collaborators are the cheapest dates around. Well, then why do they need all that money? Hold on. All right. Now, now we got to dive into this horse shit a little bit. Hold on one second. Can I, can I just show you? Okay. What did you actually hear in that? One is the Chinese military is enormous. It's bigger than ours. They have more people than ours. And uh, they're outpacing us militarily. You heard that, right? They are 10 feet tall is her argument. And they have more money than anybody. And they're going to overtake our economy. And they've got enough money to buy anybody. And you cannot criticize them. Um, let's see. Let's see. The Hmm. Okay, Mrs. Let's say let's get a little broader than this. Uh, Chinese economy. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Let's jump. Here's a, uh, oh, I'm gonna get busted by Reuters for borrowing the, the shot again on this. Um. China Evergrande hit shares hit new low amid debt crisis. Um. Scroll up. He's silly. Oh, the ads at the top of these pages. No, Kaiser misses payday. That's another um, real estate company. Uh, hopes of debt restructuring keep uh, keep floor under Evergrande shares. It's they're at a dollar eighty nine right now. Last I looked, Evergrande has not yet. They were worth like seventy dollars at one point. Evergrande has not yet confirmed the default. Uh huh. Market will want to wait and see, but not give up yet. Says analysts. Trading in shares of Kaiser suspended. China Evergrande Group shares hit a record low on Wednesday after a missed debt payment deadline put the developer at risk for becoming the country's biggest defaulter, even as hopes of a management debt restructuring uh, calmed fears of a messy collapse. Um, uh, for the record, the uh, the payments that they say have been made have not been made. I don't like. I don't know where the news got off saying a couple of weeks ago that they they hit their deadline. They didn't. None of the money went out that night. They were supposed to transfer millions of dollars into bank accounts. It didn't fucking happen. So far, any Evergrande uh, fallout has been broadly contained with the policymakers becoming more vocal and markets more familiar with the issue. Consequences of its troubles less likely to wi uh, be widely felt, market watchers have said. That's because China is basically cutting itself off from the rest of the world's economy. Um, failure by Evergrande to make $82.5 in interest payments due November 6th on some U.S. dollar bonds would trigger cross default on roughly its $19 billion um, of international bonds with possible ramifications on China's economy and beyond. With the 30-day grace period is over, while the 30-day grace period is over, Evergrande has not announced if the bonds have been have formally defaulted. That's nice. They haven't paid the money. They've missed the deadline twice, but they haven't, they haven't formally said it. Developer did not immediately respond to a Reuters request for comment. We just heard the, their window open and a long scream. Without the official announcement, the market will want to wait and see and not give up yet. Jesus Christ. Stephen Leung, director of UOB, uh, Keihian in Hong Kong said, the market also wants to wait and see what can be done with local government stepping in now. The local government's in more debt than, than the company is. Evergrande was once China's top property developer with more than 1,300 real estate projects with $300 billion of liabilities. It is now at the heart of a property crisis in China this year that has crushed almost a dozen smaller firms. Trading in shares of the embattled smaller peer, uh, Kaiser Group, was suspended on Wednesday. That's today. After a source with direct knowledge of the matter said it was unlikely to meet its $400 million offshore debt deadline on Tuesday. Yeah, they, and they didn't. They declined to comment. Nobody's fucking commenting. You guys just hang in there. Hang in there, guys. <laughs> just keep, you know, you'll get paid. Just hang out. 
Don't start offloading your shares like crazy. Jesus. Uh, shares hit record low. This is, this is bigger than Lehman Brothers, but it's internal to China. I mean, the, the level of insanity in this, let's see, uh, Chinese, uh, economic growth 2021. What are we hitting? Uh, what do we got there? Uh, kids. China's economy stumbles on power crunch pop property woes. I that's that see guys, that's Laura was right. That's why Xi Jinping is laughing. He's in, he's losing his mind. That's why. China Q3 GDP grows 4.9% uh, year over year versus the 5.2% forecast, which is a practical 1.6 September factory output growth weakest since March of 2020. Property construction extends declines. Nobody is buying new houses. And without the selling of new houses, none of those property companies have uh, are, have anything to sell. Policy measures to boost equality impact growth. That's the that's Xi Jinping's plan. That's a that's that little sentence right there. Yeah. Uh, China's economy hit its slowest pace of growth in a year in the third quarter, hurt by power shortages and wobbles in the property wobbles wobbles in the property sector, highlighting the challenge facing policymakers as they seek to prop up a faltering recovery while reigning in the real estate sector. Gross domestic product expanded 4.9% from a year ago, missing forecast for from a year ago when everything took a shit. Imagine being up 4.9% from your absolute bottom. That's not up 4.9%. That's still underwater like 8%. Missing forecasts as attempts by Beijing to curb lending to the uh, property sector exacerbated the fallout from electricity shortages, which sent factory output back to levels last seen in early 2020 when heavy COVID-19 curves were in place. When literally the factories are operating at the same pace they were when everybody left the floor, dropped what they were doing and left. The world's second largest economy had staged an impressive rebound from last year's pandemic slump, but the recovery has lost steam from a blistering 18.3% growth clocked in the first quarter, which is just the shit that was laying there when they left. Under President Xi Jinping, a drive to make structural changes that address long-term risks and distortions, which, is, which just means real estate. He doesn't believe people should be able to invest in real estate. It's the only thing they can, real, they can invest in over there. Analysts at Barclays cut their fourth quarter forecast by 1.2% to 3.5%. On the disappointing data, analysts from ANZ cut their forecast for China's 2021 GDP growth from 8%, uh, uh, cut their forecast for China's GDP growth from 8 uh, to 8% from 8.3%. Policymakers will now have to balance the impact of those structural challenges with steps that will shield the economy. You have to understand, in a country with that many people, wink, wink, you need something like 8% or 8.3% growth all the time just to keep up with like births. In response to the ugly growth numbers we expect in the coming months, that's that sounds good. That's a, he'd be li laughing. Why wouldn't you just laugh more? Oh, you can laugh. Oh, the fun we have. In response to the ugly growth numbers we expect in coming months, um, Reuters poll analysts expected GDP to rise 5.2% in the third quarter. Uh, the weak numbers sent the yuan and most Asian stock markets lower amid broader investor concerns about the world economic recovery. Yeah, that, that's what they're worried about. They're worried about the rest of the world. In Europe, China exposed luxury stocks, including LVMH, Curing and Hermes, fell about 3% each. What, sorry, what was that? About 0.3% reduction in growth? Also hurt by Xi's call for an expansion of consumption tax. They, they're going to, they're basically, this is them um, doing what we're doing about like taxing the rich and, and, uh, they, they're just going to like take it right out of their accounts. China's still a, a validly socialist country. Uh, no, uh, a communist country <laughs> has pledged to reduce inequality after years of breakneck growth. Um, uh, all nonsense. Um, basically it's to cover the fact that they let the real estate market just l lose its goddamn mind. Um, yeah, so anyways, but, but Ingram and those guys want you to think that the sun is shining out of, uh, China's ass and she's ass right now and that the CCP has got, you know, a stranglehold on everybody and it's just friggin' garbage. 
And and, it, and what's especially telling is their lack of give a shit about anybody that doesn't advertise on their channel. 